And I was going, I believe God is saying, I'm coming soon. And you must have God manifesting in your life today. Or you don't really have the Lord God with you. From the day of Moses, God appeared unto Moses. And he did much miracles. So much miracles. And he appeared to him face to face. And he had a great deep relationship with Moses. But after that, Joshua and so on and other people, they do not get to have such a mighty manifesting God as much as God was with Moses. There was no man like Moses. And, and it's not because God didn't want to manifest himself with pillar of fire and cloud, but it's the people People didn't seek the Lord God as much as Moses did. God just appeared into Moses in a burning bush. And even Moses, in the beginning, his faith was not that great. He was afraid to speak unto Pharaoh. Even God told him to do so. He said, I, don't, I cannot speak well. Send Aaron, send Aaron. And he didn't have that much great faith. But as he continued in the Lord, his faith <clears throat> continued to grow and he continued to stay in the presence of God all the time, always seeking the Lord, seeking the Lord 40 days and a couple times for 40 days, fasting and just seeking the Lord and staying in the tabernacle all the time with the Ark of the Covenant always always abiding with him and god manifested himself with much power with much signs and wonders unto moses and we can know that moses was very meek person he was very very meek and bible says you must follow holiness and peace with all men and it says if you don't then you don't have get God with you, you will not see his face. So he says, follow holiness. Holiness is truly being apart from all this worldly disgusting things. In the days of Noah, when God was going to pour out the judgment upon this whole world, God told Noah and his family to get inside the ark. It was seven days before he even rained. But he said, go in there. The ark was like a wooden box, like a huge box. It's a, it basically was a shape of a coffin, 30, 50, 300 in length. It was a shape of exactly a coffin. And it was pitch, it was covered with pitch. It had no windows, only one window on the top, a very small, tiny one. And it was basically dark inside. It's basically boring inside. There's just nothing much to do but just to stay. But Noah and his family stayed. And after seven days, then God poured out the judgment. In the same manner, God said, God said he's going to come in the same manner. Just like the days of Noah. Just like the days of a Lot. He's going to come in the same way. And he's saying, get into the ark now. Die to yourself. It is a coffin. But it is a place where God will meet you in this place. Now Noah had a testament that he also walked with God. And he was upright and righteous and perfect in his generation. Now we know that because Noah walked with God, he heard God. And he was preparing the ark as God had commanded him. God said, you build the ark. You build it. And he built it for a hundred years by him and maybe his sons were helping him. But he built it himself. And he went into the ark that he had prepared following the commands, commandments of God. Now the time is getting very close to the Lord's return. We, we know as all these signs and wonders are happening, earthquakes, signs in the skies, Jerusalem being constantly having rebuilt conflicts and the world is looking for 
peace and security and prosperity and the world is turning to Sodom and Gomorrah with all the LGBT gay homosexuals just, just ramping up the whole world as we know it and their agenda is to persecute the Christians why are they persecuting us? they say freedom of rights but who are we defending? we need to defend on God's side God decides what is sin Men never decided that. We cannot bow down and let them be compromised. Just like the Israel people, when, they, when God says, no, destroy all those things, those idol-worshipping people, destroy them, don't live with them, because they will influence you. And indeed, they did influence them with idol worship, which, where, they had, where they had much orgies and sex just to please their devils, their, their gods. That, that was a part of their worship and people loved it because it was like their entertainment. That was the like only entertainment that they basically had, like sex parties. Right now you have the filthy, filth of Hollywood, the filth of all worldly things, just making you to eat, drink, sleep, commit sexual in fornications and watch porn and all this kind of sexual mis mischiefs. It's all going on. It's all going on. And it's filth. It's filth of this world. And God is telling you, are you going to be that raven, that black bird, that, Moses, that Noah sent out from the ark? Or are you going to be <coughs> the dove that Noah sent from the ark? The raven was sent out first when, when they thought maybe the water is decreased. Maybe there's a place, the land. So Noah sent out the raven. It was a black bird. It was an unclean animal because it ate, ate dead things. And it went around and it found obviously places to land like the rotten woods or like the rotten animals that was, that was been dead or the rotten flesh of men. It ate all those things and it survived and didn't come back to the ark. It didn't come back to the ark because it loved the, the waste of the world. It loved it. All the filth of this world. It loved it. And it was able to enjoy and to live on. So it didn't come back to the ark where the safety of God, where, where God's command was to stay in the ark. It didn't come back. But when it sent out the dove, the dove is like, it's not like pigeon, it's like a white pigeon. It's like pure and clean in its form. It's a clean animal. And they sent out the pigeon and then it said it has found no place to lay its feet. No place to land. So it went around because it found all these dead animals, dirty animals, flesh, and it couldn't land there. It was filth to him. It's filthy, it's dirty, it's immoral, it was unclean to him. So the dove came back into safety. And once they sent it out again to test out whether there is land. And next time it came back and it brought an olive, olive tree branch. And they knew, oh, maybe there is land. And next time they sent it, it didn't come back. Obviously showing that there is land now. Now, what is the difference between a raven and a dove? The dove would not consent to the uncleanness of this world, to the filth of this world. The people who choose to live holy and righteous in the Lord's eyes is righteous indeed. But those who choose to compromise the world and just continue to sustain the world will not be lifted up. There is this famous prophet who prophesied saying that get ready to get beheaded for your faith. Be prepared because he said you're not going up. You're not going to be raptured. Only few people will be raptured just like Noah and his family. Only few will be raptured but most will be beheaded for their faith, meeting the Antichrist 
and in the great tribulation be left behind. So he's like, just prepare yourself to get beheaded. Because if you don't have God manifesting in this life, you don't have a close relationship with God. Because if you did have a close relationship with God, God would listen to your prayers and God would do much miracles for you. It's very sad to see that people like Moses' faith was so strong and he had God manifesting. But after that, the generation becomes corrupted. L less faith than Moses. It should increase, but it rather decreased. And after Josh Joshua, Joshua did similar miracles like Moses, but not as many miracles as Moses. He just stopped the water flow once and had the, had the sun stop. But that was about the greatest miracles that Joshua got to really see, except winning the war. But Moses had like fire, pillar of fire always, and cloud come all the time, and had manna, had, had all kinds of all kinds of miracles. But it seems like Joshua was almost reduced to even less than half. And then so on, and it's almost gone. There's no more miracles much after after that. Maybe except just winning the wars and Jesus coming here and here and there and here and there, but not much. Not much significant miracles going on. And the people's faith became a, a story, story, story told, written by Moses. Just written, written story faith. They said, oh, back in the day when Moses was then, yeah, God led all the people out of Egypt with such miracles and miracles. And it was just told by father to son and son to their children. And maybe their sons maybe went to church. Maybe attended church services just like you guys. Maybe the people, your, your forefather has great faith and then you had little, little faith so you had like Sunday Christian faith. You just went to church on Sunday and that was about it. You, after a study, you went to college and you start losing your faith because you, ne you never had real, real prayer life. You never had a real encounter, a strong prayer life with God. So it started dwindling down. And then after that, then your children almost no faith. And they're just washed with all this world. Just playing video games all day long and, and just socializing, chit-chatting, you know. Just being lost in all this computerized world. And they think God is a myth. God is just nonsense. And they, they watch the movies like God's Not Dead kind of stuff. When I watched it, I was like, these, these Christians don't even know God. These Christians, this mainstream Christian, don't even know Jesus. God is not that weak. God is not that powerless. It's just like, you're just trying to prove God with some logic. God is not proven like that. There's power manifesting in God's kingdom. He manifests himself with power, with signs and wonders. But every time the generation get weak and weak and weak, and then it's, it's like a storytelling. You have to believe the book. You don't see it in your real life. No, I'm telling you that same same Jesus that Moses encountered, that Joshua, that Peter, John, Paul, that they encountered with much signs and wonders following after them, that same Jesus is available today. And you need to know, you need to understand. If you want to walk like Moses, you need to watch your mouth and watch your anger Watch your envies and jealousies and things like that and, and get rid of it. Do everything in your power to get rid of that out of your mouth because that kills your relationship. If you don't have peace with men, that kills your relationship with God because it also shows you're very haughty and very prideful because all those things come up because of pride. Pride is the heart issue. And all those filthy things come from is because your lust, for the flesh, lust for the world, lust for food, 
drinks and waters and all kinds of nice things and nice stuff. All that lust for money and wealth and, and women and men and whatever you're lusting after. All, this is all filth. You need to cut those off. Cut it off. And start entering into the ark. Where it might seem very boring. Where it seem very not, not fun activity wise. But where you really encounter God. Where you really meet God and have His presence with you. It's a place where you cut off all those world things. It's a place of prayer. place of place of fasting. Seeking the Lord. And those memories, those awesome moments become really valuable in your relationship because you will indeed meet God in that place. In that place where you think it's no fun. That's where you have God's joy, God's glory, and it surpasses all these entertainments that you love to do. It surpasses all that. All Whatever you think, you, 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 you think what drugs give you peace and awesome feeling. No, it surpasses all those feelings and has no negative feedback. It has, it's just great. It's just great. It's just awesome to be with the presence of the Lord. Just amazing. It's the best thing that you can ever choose for your life is having Him with you. And then there's, there's no worries for your life, for money, for jobs, for whatever. It's all going to be provided by God for you, supernaturally. God will make a way, and He will be there like, I'm here. Just ask me, and He'll be there, and He'll be given unto you. All those things that you ever need and want, it will be all just be granted, and you'll be living in the glory of God, in His presence, doing His will, saving souls, doing much great value for your own life that used to be without any value, because you're chasing after these wind and, and vapor, and it won't be like that anymore. It will be fulfilling because now you're truly fulfilling your purpose in your life, which is to love God and to serve God. Understand? But it won't be empty like all these religious Christians who don't really meet God person to person, who don't really hear God, who don't really have a relationship with God. It'll be different with, with their that religious life versus a real meeting with God daily in your life. Like, it would be like Moses. Now, who's Moses? Moses is just a person like us. Who's Elijah? Well, why, how, why does he get to go to heaven straight up without dying? How come he has fire coming down? How come he's doing miracles? And he had a deep relationship with God. And he's just like a man, just like us. His same body, same flesh. How come Paul did? Paul, same thing. Peter, same thing. John, same people. They're not any genius than us. They're as normal as any man can be. And if you just decide in your heart, I'm going to go down and do this and cut it off, then do it. There are people like who, who sign up to go to Marines or Navy, SEAL, or, or some army they want to sign, sign up to be. And when they go to the army place, they shave their head, they, they take off their normal clothes and wear the army clothes, they get, start getting to training. There is no more of self anymore. It becomes all, all trained to get rid of your dumb habits that you used to have. Like if you're used to sleeping late and waking up late, well, that's going to be changing. You're going to sleep early and get up early. If you had a weak body, you, you, you will become strong because they'll make sure that you train every day and that body will become strong with muscular. If you have bad habits like smoking, drinking, those will be all cut off because you won't be able to do it there, really, and, and you'll be able to get off those drugs and, and alcohol infested life and they make you an overcomer and if you just stay stick with it and just don't give up and they'll the, the training is of course in it, it takes a lot of patience a lot of enduring a lot of enduring i've seen some seals when they go training they just tell them to lie down into the in the, in the beach and then they just lie down and the waves just come and just 
choke them with the, the seawater, salty seawater. It goes into her nose and mouth and ears and everything. And they're just like, you know, like drinking that water. like, And they're like, you know, coughing and throwing up and things like that. And, and to just, to, to, the guy just tell him, well, you want to give up? You can give up right there. You can give up any moment. But you're going to be going home. You won't be no Navy still. You're just a person who gave up. God is telling you, hey, his training is much, much nicer than that. Yet, he will be cutting off all those wrong, bad habits out of your life. And if you want to be a soldier of Christ, a soldier of Jesus Christ, you're willing to cut it off. You're willing to cut up and just tell Jesus, what must I do? Holy Spirit, lead me, teach me, guide me, lead me, teach me, God. Jesus, I need you. You stay in the prayer and you stay in fasting and praying, fasting and praying until you receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Gifts of the Holy Spirit will manifest in you and you be a soldier of God, well equipped with power of God. And you must, of course, humble yourself because I've seen many people fall into pride after this because they got some gifts, they think they're somebody and they just go crazy with, with power, okay? But you stay humble and humble yourself as, as Moses and, and Elijah, they just bow down to the Lord every day, just, just I'm nothing, and you're everything, I'm nothing. And they sought his face of the Lord every day, just like that. And you'd be good, you'd be okay. And you must have the love for God, love for people. And how would that come? With that little love that you might have for people, you start using it. You start doing it. You start praying for people, praying for the sick, praying for your brothers and sisters, praying for those people that you don't need to get any glory. You can just pray from far away without them letting them know that you're praying for them. You just pray in your secret closet for them. Every day, three, four hours a day, minimum. A soldier of God, need to stay in prayer. And Jesus showed his hand. He, he prayed all night, all night, all night, almost every day because he was a true man of God. Jesus was the Son of God and he showed us a perfect example of how we should be. And that's what he did. And he told his disciples, go pray. When they couldn't pray one hour, he got mad at them. He said, what, you couldn't pray one hour? You, without one hour prayer, ain't gonna get you anywhere. You're not gonna be able to overcome sins. You're not going to be able to overcome much with one hour prayer, I'm telling you. You, you at least need two, three hours of praying every day. That's a minimum. That's minimum. What? It's easy? Just as you start doing it, you are going to be able to go longer and longer. Maybe you started 20 minutes and that's the longest time you ever pray. Next time you'll be able to 30, 40. If you put your mind to it and like, I'm not getting out. I'm not kidding. I'm going to continue praying. Pray, pray in words, pray in tongues, worship the Lord, just sing to the Lord, just, just read the word of God aloud. I'm saying do something and talk to God just everywhere, anywhere. Use every single moment of your time. Just continue talking and speaking to Him. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. And you'd be sooner or later, you'd be close to God. There's this guy that I, that uh, he's, he's, he's under in our church and he's, he only been here like two months. When he pray, he kneels down on his knees and puts his face to the ground. And he's praying with whole heart, seriously. He's praying with his whole heart. And I was kind of impressed, like, oh, this guy's just doing it. And then when, when he's just praying for a meal, people just usually finish the prayer very quickly and they eat, right? No, he's taking his time praying. And he's just fasting day and night, fasting, fasting. You're fasting another three days? You're fasting what again? Well, he's just fasting and praying. And guess what? I, I told him, man, you go like that, you're going to meet God. And that, that week, yeah, he, he met that God while he's sleeping. Just God just showed up and, and come down with power and like, like electric power just come down on him several times. And he's like, wow, well, just like, wow, well, it's like, this awesome. God just manifesting himself to him. And he's, he's just a normal person. His heart, his, his attitude, his attitude was holy. 
his attitude, he, he regarded God as a holy God. As holy, holy, holy. He regarded God and he respected the Lord. Every time he offer a prayer, he don't do it like half-heartedly. Casually. He didn't do it casually. He did it wholeheartedly. With, with, with humbling himself. With humility. With much humility. He did it. And that's where he met God. And that's where Jesus manifested. I'm telling you, man, like, you do like that in no time. In no time, God will manifest Himself. Because He wants to. He wants to have a relationship with you. Just like He had with Moses. He wants that. But nobody is seeking Him like Moses. Nobody is seeking Him like Elijah. Nobody is seeking Him. Like Peter, Paul, and John. Nobody loves Him that much. Everybody on their own way. Fill their self with wickedness in their mouth, with pride and arrogance and anger and outbursts of wrath and fighting and bickering and just being jealous and envying and, and just full of flesh, full of flesh like the ravens, just, just fighting how, well, who's better, who's more popular, who's, who's much bigger, whose church, church is much better. Huh? It's all like, all like self, self-centered Self-centered, what gospel is that? Huh? That that's like the cult. That's a cult. Who's more richer? Who's writing this? There was a gospel about that. I thought the gospel was about having Jesus in your life today, manifesting just like the stories of the Bible. Just like that, nothing less. Nothing less. God will manifest Himself just as He did before. What? He ceased to who? To the dead Christians He ceased. To the religious dummies, Pharisees. Yeah, the, Jesus don't manifest to them, to the Pharisees. And that's why they said, well, it ceased. Yeah, back in the day, all these power happened. But today it doesn't. Yeah, to the dumb Pharisees who don't have real relationship, who don't have any faith who don't have real relationship with Jesus, yeah, to them, Jesus don't manifest for sure. It doesn't. I was like that. I didn't know nothing. And they said, oh, Jesus don't do those miracles like he did in baloney. Baloney. Liars. Blind guides who lead the blind. And they all fall into the ditch because they don't know Jesus. They don't know. You want to be blind? Follow them. Those no experienced Christians with God in any manifestation of the Lord. Whatever. Dude, Bible's not like that. Bible is full of manifestation of God. To those who love Him with true sincerity and they have real dedication in prayer life. These Pharisees, yeah, they might read the Bible a thousand times, but they don't have any deep, loving relationship prayer life with faith, they don't have that faith. Their faith is dead. They don't, they don't, uh, they profess to know God, but they don't know God. They, they just memorize scriptures, but it's, it's not in their life. The scripture doesn't manifest in their life. Why? Their faith, their faith is dead. They don't believe that. It doesn't happen. God only <laughs> does it to people who, who are like children, who believe every single word, who believe every single positive, oh, God did this in the past? Yeah! Oh, can He do that to me today? Yeah! The Pharisee says, no, it doesn't happen anymore. So the faith of the child gets just killed at that moment, like, oh, oh, okay, God doesn't do that anymore, honey, okay. Oh, uh, I guess so. They just kill the child's faith. No, it happens, yes. Yes, Jesus can manifest Himself. He showed me Himself. I've seen heaven. I've seen angels. Oh, how come you, how come you can do, Just put in the work. Be a real soldier seeking with all your life. Why wouldn't He manifest? What, what's wrong? Did Jesus, Jesus pass away? Huh? Did He die? He said, I'll be with you till the end of the world. I'll be with you here in, the, in, your, in your life. Manifesting with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. People, I don't know. 
Which one do you want to follow? The dead Christians? Be wise and believe. Believe in Jesus who does miracles yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changed. Gospel never changed. Who said it stopped? Just tell him to be quiet and stop killing the people's faith. And just stop killing the gospel of the true Jesus Christ. Amen? So, follow the Lord. Be fervent in your prayers and seeking the Lord. If you can, fast. Fast. 40 days, 10 days to start. Do something with your faith. Move. Don't stay in your ground. Do something extreme. Unless you go extreme with God, you don't meet God because God doesn't receive any vain offerings. When Cain offered his offerings, it was just like, yeah, just say, yeah, just do it. God didn't, God didn't accept that. But when Abel offered his offering, he gave the best, the best from his heart. He gave the first uh, sheep. It's not because Cain was offering grain. They, Moses' Lord also uh, accepted grain offerings too. But he, God didn't accept Cain's offering because of his attitude. It's like, yeah, just I gotta get, just I gotta get. Just casually, casually, casually. Abel didn't do it casually. He offered it with his heart. Oh, here's the best for you. Best for you, God. Here's the best, the first fruit. I gave you the first fruit. He gave the best. And Abel's offering was received by God. Cain, God told him, and he was angry because God didn't accept it. And God told him, if you do well, wouldn't I accept you? If you do well, wouldn't I accept you? Same thing, if you seek God well, wouldn't He accept you? Wouldn't He come to you? If you seek God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, with all your whole being, just love the Lord and just seek Him for who He is every day, not just one day, like the whole month or two months or just whatever it takes, wouldn't He accept your prayers and offering? that you're giving, your prayers are, are, we are a living offering unto God. Your worship, your seeking, wouldn't you accept it? He will. What would it take to really give the whole hearted offering? Cut off your cell phone, your entertainment, just, 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 from today on, just turn off. Turn off. No more. No more. Just don't even talk to your friends. Don't even talk to your friends and just, just, Lock yourself in your room daily. Now people tell you you're crazy. Yeah, be crazy for Jesus. And that's how you meet Jesus. There's no secret. Be crazy for Him. And you meet God. And He'll bless you. And you don't need to care what other people think about you. You know how many friends I lost? You know? I lost like everybody. I lost everyone. Even my family just, just telling me that I went crazy. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that was the greatest decision. Greatest decision in my life. And I gained much more after that because I got to evangelize and, and you know, they all became my true brothers and sisters. Amen? So if you're my true brother and sister, to do everything to seek God and be extreme because I want you also to be raptured up and have Jesus manifesting in your life that is no longer a story but it is a reality in your life. That Jesus would be a reality in your life. Do everything. Do everything to just grab, grab this gospel. And you cannot have God of a yesterday or somebody else's story. You need to have it real in your life. Him manifesting in your life as He did for all the other people in the Bible. You need that. Without that, you're just like I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You're just like, who got myself? Well, I don't know. I don't know who this is. I never, I don't know. You don't want to be like that. You want to be like, oh, I know him. Yeah, I did much miracle for him. I did manifest myself to him. Yeah, I did give. You want to hear that in the day. You don't want to be like, oh, Lord, Lord. Like, Jesus, like, I don't know you. Depart from me. You don't want to hear that. You want to hear that. 
I know this guy. Yeah. And he knows me that I, he, he knows that I know him too. You want to be like, you really want to be like that with God. You want to really be like this with God. You don't want to be like, oh, I'm not so sure. God don't know me. Does he know me? I don't know. You don't want to be in this position. You want to be in this. And it does take effort. Can you do it? Of course. Can you do your homework? Right? Can you, can you pass the class? How do you pass class? Come every day to the school. Spend like 10 hours a day in school. I don't know. And do your homework. And you can certainly pass the class. Certainly pass the school. What? You couldn't pass this? Cut up all those junk out of your mind. Cut up all those junk. You definitely can do it. Anybody can. Anybody can. Anybody. You don't have to be smart to do this. You can be like a fisherman, a farmer, or nobody. A beggar. Even a beggar can do it. Where is your mind? Where is your heart? Amen? Put it to God today. Amen? Let's pray unto the Father God. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you Father God for your word. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. Father God, I just ask that you please give us your fiery passion in our life. Father God, let your spirit manifest in our life. I just ask that you help us be close to you and help us to do our best to seek you with all our heart, with all our strength, everything in you, daily, 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 dedicating ourselves daily, no matter what the persecution is. Help us to stick with you and just stay in your presence, stay in the ark, stay in the ark where there is your presence, Father. Help us to stay in you, Father God. I just ask that you please, Lord, strengthen us and bless us spiritually, physically, financially. And I just ask that you please strengthen our faith. Make us true Christians that love you, Lord, and that have you in, in, in manifesting in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We give you all the praise and glory, Father God, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory God. God bless you.